All right, so here I have bolted the engine and transmission together uh, with the plate in between. So it, at this point, to me anyways, is ready to install. Uh, I kind of made, I guess this is the little wooden, cause I don't need a permanent, I don't need like a metal uh, engine stand on the floor cause I don't plan to store very many engines. So I made, I had a two by four, just a permanent thing for it to sit on and be kind of cradled while I put, and I had made this to just set the um, transmission on. And then I had it on like a furniture dolly to move around. And then when it came time to bolt them together, you know, it made it a little easier to kind of put the two together there. Um, and then I also got a clutch kit, new clutch cable and quadrant. So they recommended with the clutch, uh, the Ford Performance clutch, that you install a new clutch cable and quadrant because the plastic, plastic, excuse me, plastic old quadrant um, would just uh, break because of the extra pressure from the new clutch. That was a, a recommendation. I don't, I guess they're not trying to say like, oh, it's definitely gonna happen, but at the same time, uh, it could happen. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna replace it, I don't wanna have to deal with it. And then this one is actually adjustable, not on the firewall, but down here by the, uh, at the end. So once you put it in the clutch fork, and that's what I did also as well, put a new clutch fork and all that. So once you put that cable through there and tighten it up, then there will be, so, so you can kind of see how that all, you know, if you're doing this as well. Uh, it was pretty, pretty easy process to put the engine transmission together. I double checked a bunch of times um, whether I was actually engaged with the splines. I've turned the crank pulley and I've seen, and in, in gear, I've seen the uh, output shaft turn. So I know they're spline together and ready to go. So, yep. Next step, put that in there. All right, so as you can see here, engine transmission in the chassis. I'm actually pretty surprised at how much space uh, between the top of the bell housing and then the firewall here. I expected uh, it was gonna be a little closer, but which is a good thing because I thought you, it would be very difficult to get to the back of the engine, but you could see there's pretty good amount of space. You can like easily get to the back there. You could snug bolts if you needed to. Here's the transmission down the center tunnel here. I have it on the mounts, obviously, because why, why else would you put it? And there's a little pin, so you gotta make sure the little pin Little nubby pin ends up in the elongated hole there. And then there's the uh, the bolt or the nut on that side. The uh, Moroso oil pan fits uh, pretty perfectly in the frame. So I can see why they have you swap that out now. I mean, I believed it. It's not like I, I didn't trust that what they were just saying was true, but. And then on this side, same thing, you can see the little, which I think, this side I gotta adjust a little bit. I think it needs to come up or down a little bit to get that little nub thing in the, at least in one. And then there's oil filter. Here's one of the exhaust outlets on this side. Here's the EGR tube that I made. I wanna adjust it a little bit because it rubs down here. You can see against the aluminum there. So I want to adjust that. But yeah, that's pretty much in there. I should have, so I was a little concerned, this might be something you want to think about. I was a little concerned myself with being able to lift the engine and transmission up high enough uh, to get it in the, in the chassis, to clear the, the, radiator and hood support bar here so i left it on the ground the problem is is as soon as i got the legs for the cherry picker under it it's pretty much sitting on the legs of the cherry picker now so i have to figure out how i'm going to get that out of there but you know you might want to put it on some jack stands like i said i was a little 
concerned to do that because I didn't want to lift it up too high. But um, maybe if you went to the lowest jack stand setting, that might work. Uh, it might be a little bit better than, than, uh, than the way I did it. Now, the next step that I have to do after you put all that in is you have to install this A-frame. This is the mount. This is going to be the transmission mount. So I was actually thinking that the transmission would end up, I don't know if you can see the mount there, would end up in these in that hole, which is part of the chassis. So I thought that would end up there, but it doesn't. So I guess, and you can kind of see there's a tab there, tab there. You have to slide that A-frame underneath. So you gotta lift it up a little bit, then slide that A-frame underneath, and then that kind of bolts into place and then bolts, and they say you don't need any spacers. This bolts then to the bottom of the transmission. So that's one of my next steps after I get, I wanna get that other mount a little bit better aligned. But yeah, progress. Little bit, little, little by little. So that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna give another, I'm gonna, I might do some adjustment here and then I might do another little update just to kind of show you little things that I've adjusted, so. There might be an end to this video other than this right here. All right, so I put the A-frame, you can see the A-frame is now in there. Two big bolts in the back. I'm gonna wait to tighten everything up because I was kind of confused at first of how they want you. So this is the stock mount. I'm gonna get a new one uh, because I think that rubber's pretty old and uh, I don't wanna have to go through a transmission mount. Uh, and have to change it out again. So I'm gonna get a new one um, that comes, so these two bolts bolt into the top, uh, onto the transmission and the tail shaft. And then these two will go through the slotted holes in the A-frame that you can kind of see down in there. So you'll see that you got the bolts, you can see they kind of go in here on the mount. So I'm gonna leave that loose for now. And then uh, I will eventually slide it up in there and uh, get it situated and bolted in. I've got the, um, I readjusted, kind of moved around the engine a little bit. So it slid those little, little nubby button pieces into the, into the slots there. And then I started to kind of lay out wiring and just kind of look. I got to go through all that, kind of figure that stuff out. Um, but little by little, uh, I'm very, I'm actually... It's a very large engine when you compare it to the um, the the non overhead cam engine. So I was like actually kind of worried. I thought I was going to be like right up against it, but they've really spaced it out very nicely in here. So I'm actually kind of uh, kind of pleased with that. And uh, it's sitting up a little high in the front, but that's I believe because my air pressure is out of my rear tires here. I got to get. That's another thing I got to do is uh, since I went bigger front brakes. You can't use these 16 inch wheels anymore because it doesn't clear the brake caliper. So that's another thing I got to do is get some 17 inch uh, wheels so I can clear that. Uh, but yeah, because those are the original Mustang wheels. But like I said, getting there little by little. And that's so getting it in there. I probably should have videoed this part. I'm, I'm going to, so I'll go over kind of, I did it by myself. I used a cherry picker and I used uh, one of these load adjusting slings. Uh, and then I went to two, I went to these, uh, let me see, I wanna make sure I picked the right ones. Yeah, I think I went to this one and this one on the front. So that's the top of the head, it's pretty strong. And then I went to the back of the head uh, with some bolts into this little piece, the bossing there and then the other one. So. I, the nice thing about that leveling sling is so you can adjust it, uh, the load. So, you know, obviously when you have the engine on it, it's balanced a certain way. Then when you put the transmission onto it and you have all that weight uh, from the transmission, it's gonna be off balance. So you can level it and to pick it up with that leveling sling. And then what I had to do essentially was lift it up, you know, over this, and then I had to tilt it with the sling and then slowly but surely keep pushing it back, keep pushing it back, keep leveling it, keep going down, keep leveling it, keep, and then 
you get it to clear. There's like this bar that runs across here. The shifter has to clear. And then you just slowly have to just ever so slightly keep moving it back, moving it back, moving it back, moving it back until it gets, um, you know, to back to that spot there. And that's about where it sits. And I was like a little concerned at first because I actually thought the mount part of the transmission was gonna go back against the mount on the frame, but it doesn't. That's what that A-frame is for. And so, um, you know, I was looking at where the engine mount was and it was lined up and I was looking back there. I was like, man, I don't understand how it's gonna work. But then, you know, I kind of was like looking in the book and figured it out because they, for some reason, I guess they send you this mount. So this is an adapter for a 99 to 04 transmission. I don't have that. I think this T45 stopped the 90. Eight, and then they went to the 99 because the 99 uh, was slightly different in that sense. So that was kind of confusing because I thought that was going to be, I thought that mount was going to replace this stock mount, but it doesn't. You utilize this stock mount uh, for that. So if, you, if you're looking for clarification, that's what it is. You know, and like I said, I'm figuring this out little, little bit by little bit as I go. I'm not really... I'm trying to figure it out for myself instead of just asking questions about on forums or anything like that. So that's what makes it kind of difficult is because I'm kind of learning. It, it feels like stumbling sometimes, but I like that's the way I like to do it because then you really kind of learn it that way. Um, so, yeah, so that's where I'm at now. Now it's just going to be about hooking everything up, getting everything bolted in and getting it to the point where, you know, it can be started and, and driven and getting all that stuff settled in. So yeah, next video will probably be just hooking, hooking things up, bolting things in, all that stuff. So stay tuned for that.